Hello, welcome to the uh, Active Banners Weekly Sync, October 29th. Uh, first up, uh, IPNS. Uh, yeah, so um, mostly just need to go through some reviews with Steven, hopefully today uh, or today and tomorrow to get the stuff cleaned up. We're like, yay, close to getting out the door, I think. Um, I guess in, in some other news that's not strictly IPNS, but um, related, and especially if we want to do some of the, the multi-writer stuff, the other parts of the PR that started moving this IPNS over PubSub stuff uh, is finally getting implemented um, because more than just us have asked for it. Uh, so one of those PRs is over there, uh, which basically lets us have better insight into um, you know, who sent us a message, who sent, who transmitted a message to us so we can go ask them more questions. Um, and that is, oh, and yeah, the other one is being able to have pluggable pub sub routers, which will help us with some of our other concerns, like why don't we have, C like why are the messages not CIDs or why are we signing things multiple times, things of that nature. Cool. Okay. Uh, Dirk, that's one of my bits. Uh, yeah. So basically, uh, this week I added some, um, like, I made it backwards compatible. I made uh, the proof of concept backwards compatible with what's on master. And uh, I created a test plan on test ground. <clears throat> um, and today I'm going to go to the test ground meeting. It's in an hour or so. And just see if I can start contributing there. Because I think, uh, that might be the quickest way to, to get to merging this into master. Okay. Uh, also update, uh, we merged the um, uh, server side uh, performance improvements for uh, BitSwap that should help uh, cluster. Um, I think I just merged that into GoFest master though, so we're gonna see if I can deploy master on cluster. See what happens there. So, so what happens now with that? Like you're gonna deploy that somewhere? Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can get cluster to just deploy that in cluster, um, and hopefully it'll improve things. We'll see. Um, like uh, Hector had been previously complaining about issues where like a block was wanted and a block wasn't sent, but I'm also uh, getting reports that this is happening at 0422 in some cases, anyways. So I'm not sure if it's specific to the changes. In, or I really don't think it's specific to the changes we've made in BitSwap. Um, yeah. Okay. Unix OS v1.5. Uh, there's the spec. Uh, the spec comments are still ongoing. Um, I had that one remaining comment, maybe just removing. Uh, so the, the current spec has this concept of default metadata that I'm trying to use to save space. And now I'm realizing uh, that it's probably not necessary. Uh, Peter did some work on that and showed that it really doesn't make much of a difference. Um, Unless anyone objects, my plan is to just remove it and simplify it and just make it so that if you want to have to specify metadata, you have to specify for every single file in the directory. I haven't really gotten any comments, yay or nay, on this so far. So I added some comments because um, yeah. you posted the spec and then I helpfully went on holiday almost immediately. Uh, but I'm back and I've read it and I've commented. So okay. if you could go through them, that would be cool. Thank you. I will look through that. Awesome. Okay. Um, I have maybe just like a Unix FS question, which either is really stupid and simple or, or deep and for another time, which is like, why, why do we care about metadata in like attaching it to files in the, in the general sense? So I, if like, so I move stuff around, I'm not really going to care. I'm just sending you my data. It depends on the metadata. So like one easy one is executable bits and other random permissions where like actually manage really care about this because if you're seeking executables and not executables and you have the extra metadata. Um, another one is like, is the uh, timestamps with like if I rsync from you and then someone else rsync from me. Um, and like we just through our sync, we, we do like in and out of IPFS, we care about timestamps. Like within IPFS, obviously there's no rsync, we just use hashes over and that's fine. 
uh, but we're trying to like ingest and like extract from IPFS. Um, we do care about having the right timestamps, um, unfortunately. Uh, but that doesn't. This is that doesn't yeah. matter if I share with people, right? Like, like I feel like our sync is like a particular use case. It's almost like an application specific use case. So the well, so the, it like the original use right. case that kicked all this off was file system based package managers. So you have all your packages on the file system somewhere that have been materialized there by something like rsync, which then replicates all the executable bits and, and all that kind of stuff as well. So that's why we need to have it in Unix event. I, I guess I, I'm I guess my question, and maybe like this is effectively what this is, is like this doesn't feel like a general a general use case. It's like Unix FS dash I want to use rsync. Right. Like, yeah. But the problem is, like, most it's, people just want to share files. Uh, most yes, but like in terms of package managers, a lot of package managers actually depend on the timestamps being there and being accurate in order to sync anything. Um, and yeah, so basically, yes, we're trying to target package managers here. Because um, yeah, we're not we're not sharing like streams of bytes. We're sharing chunks of a file system, and so that includes things like you know executable and so on and so forth. I guess is it plausible that in like whatever you know either Unix FSV2 or or some other point that we like separate these things and we say if you want to use do you want to live in this world where like your metadata is attached to files because for some reason you care about timestamps like here you go and if you're ready for the distributed world where timestamps make no sense like here's what we recommend. Uh, so like the timestamps in all of these fields are actually they're optional. Um, so like. I expect it to be more like, if I care about timestamps, I add my data with timestamps. If I don't care about the timestamps, I just don't include them. And that should just work, usually. Um, yeah, it's like, I'd rather live in a world without timestamps, but they can be convenient if you could sort of maybe trace them. <laughs> um, yeah, now we definitely need things like executable bits. We also need things like just like the read, write, next executable bit, or sorry, the read and write bits as well, just because like, if we're importing and exporting from file systems, those matter. If we're not importing and exporting from file systems, then we only need the executable bit. Um, if we're importing and exporting from file systems, then we really do care about like all the other weird bits because they just need to be consistent. Yeah, uh, there there are also other like for now it's they're not going to be in here, but in the future we'll probably want other extended attributes, um, just because like again like Unix package managers and support these, but like labels for uh, security systems and stuff like that as well. Um, those are, well, actually, I guess labels for security systems are privileged attributes that may not work. I'm not entirely sure. Um, we'll have to figure that one out. But Where would be the right place for me to comment on this stuff? Would it be on, I don't know if it's really worth commenting on the Unix plus 1.5 spec as much. This is just so, more like, general, like how IPFS interacts yeah. with Unix FS. So a lot of these comments are like in IPFS slash IPFS or IPFS slash notes, mostly in IPFS slash notes. I think we have a metadata issue there somewhere. Um, I mean, if you want to go through and like create a meta metadata issue and like coalesce thinking on that, <laughs> that would be awesome. Um, we have a lot of like these issues that are like built up over time that, yeah, uh, could use some uh, coupling. Yeah, it's not there at the moment, though, unfortunately. Like, we know we kind of need metadata in some cases, but we don't know exactly how we want it to look. OK. Um, mount. Uh, there is a demo of write support up. Uh, it announced this on Monday. Um, you can take a look at it. It's called uh, IPFS Ad Performance. Uh, Adin? Uh, yeah. Um... Did a bunch of testing. There's lots of lots of data. Um, thing that came up is there's a potential Badger issue either uh, on either Linux is too slow or Windows is too fast, depending on where you think the bug lies um, when sync rights are turned on, which is the default. Um, there's an issue file. Someone's looking at it uh, in Badger land. 
if you are interested in just doing things now, you can just turn off sync rights and you will be fast or, you know, use Windows. Um, we have to figure out what we're going to do next. Yeah, I wonder if it's done now. And there's still like a few more tests I could I could run to make sure. Um, no, like I would for bother. Instance, like, but oh. I think I think this is just like what I think this is just what it is. Like we already know the state here, which is there's some amount of badgerness things, which whether it's related to ext4 or Linux, I, mm -hmm. I suspect Linux. Uh, isn't really clear, but I don't know if it really matters for us. Yeah, well, I, I suspect it's, I, I really actually just suspect that it's Windows, um, that somehow on Linux, uh, well, you know, there are a bunch of different things it could be. It could be that Windows is more you about writing. It could be that um, when you call sync on Linux, it's like it's, it waits and then it only syncs when you actually call sync, which means you have like additional latency where it's doing nothing and then it does everything, it does nothing, it does everything. Uh, there are a bunch of weird things that could be happening here. But okay, I, I give the badge people a bit of time to figure that one out. Okay. There's, there's a random other thing too, which I don't know is relevant, which is that on Windows, uh, Badger automatically creates the file. Like the log sizes are fully created at startup, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, whereas Linux creates them incrementally. I don't know if that actually matters, but. I don't. So, like, Usually what it does is like it'll allocate the file up front and then it'll like fill it in later. Um, so like on, uh, because this is always an issue for like actually like torrent applications that do this. But like they usually have options for like pre-allocating or allocating later. Um, I don't know. Maybe that, like that, that could easily be an issue. Like uh, if I have to change that later, then I have like updated I notes. If I have to change, like if I, Set the, the size up front, and it may be a lot faster. Um, I wonder if there's a way to force Badger to allocate everything up front. That's actually, we can look at the options, uh, default options. I'm not seeing any option to trim this one on. I don't know. We can we can come back. Uh, we should yeah. probably just like clear the rest of the stuff. Okay. Uh, next up, data store performance related. Um, uh, I have one up to here. I may have given last week. I can't remember. Um, the badger the badger data store now periodically garbage collects. Unfortunately, it the garbage collection is still not actually doing anything useful, at least when the data store is small. Um, I try adding a couple of gigabytes in the garbage collecting and it doesn't actually delete anything. Um, like regardless of what I try to do, it just doesn't delete anything. So I've got to debug this a bit more and figure out why it's not deleting anything. Um, yeah. Okay, Walkers asks, does anyone have anything that they are blocked on or need reviews or need help on? Only the Unix first comments, but we covered that already. Okay. I have a question about the GC stuff, just so mm -hmm. I have a base understanding. Uh, does it does it lock so like you you can't GC while you're while you're adding stuff? I don't know. So like when you're adding stuff, it's not going to have any problems. I think. Like, like if you GC add them in the wrong order and there's a thing that's not pinned, you can just GC it. Mm. Oh, sorry. In IPFS, yes. In IPFS, uh, we do lock. Uh, so we take a read, like, whenever we start adding data, we take a read lock. Um, and then whenever we want to GC, we take a write lock. Uh, and uh, yeah, and then I, like, actually when we're adding, we will occasionally check to see like, hey, uh, is someone trying to take the write lock? If they are trying to take the write lock, we'll take the write lock and we'll do the garbage collection run. Um, which is unfortunate because yes, it's a pause the world. Like you can no longer add while we're garbage collecting thing. Um, uh, this is like the big, one of the big reasons we really want to like switch to a, a different garbage collection system, um, like an incremental system or some like some kind of concurrent garbage collection system. But we don't really like, have a concrete 
plan for that yet. Uh, my plans usually include like reference counting on disk somewhere. And then like, then if you do something like that, but when you add a file, you would atomically increment reference counts. Uh, but we don't currently do that. I also noticed that Badger doesn't delete any of the vlog files when you do a repo GC. Is that intentional? Yeah. Uh, it, well, I'm not sure. I, I actually don't know. I, I, th that, that was a point here where like, when you call repo GC, it doesn't actually clear space. Um, there is a function that we call on Badger itself that tells it to, like, so you have to tell Badger to clean up things, but it still doesn't clean up disk space. Um, I don't know what's going on here. It may just be that like, yeah, it doesn't delete files. It just like frees up space so that you can add more data. Um, uh, if that's the case, then I really want to talk to Badger and say, hey guys, uh, can we make this not work this way? Um, but on the other hand, like it, I don't know. So like, I know that the way that you see is they rewrite log files. So like basically like they'll, they'll take a, a specific like log files with a bunch of data in it. They'll sample it to see like okay, how many chunks should be free and or should, should be deleted. And if they see like over a certain fraction needs to be deleted, or actually, no, I take it back. Yeah, no, it's, if, if over a certain fraction needs to be deleted, um, then they go through and rewrite the entire log file and just like flush it out to disk again. Um, so that should do it. If they're doing it in place, that might be an issue. I don't know. Okay, um, I don't want to hold you guys for too long. Uh, any other questions or anything for parking lot? So I said I'm <clears throat> still planning on reaching out to the packaging group. Sorry, Stephen. Um, and just want to confirm who I'm reaching out to about what. And um, probably, Stephen, I'll get you to review these emails before I send them to make sure I'm not saying anything inaccurate um, or misleading. Um, but yeah, just want to make sure that that seems OK. OK, no obvious have jigs. Um, other thing, super fast, totally flew out of my head. So I'll hang on it when I remember. Maybe you want us to comment on that roadmap issue? 2020 planning? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that was this or a different meeting. But I, I know it's something on my to-do list that I haven't done yet. Please do. Everyone's welcome. You know, the thing was actually, um, so we were starting this meeting at 8.15 because the previous meeting went until um, 8.15 and so it was like two 45 minute meetings. We just moved that meeting later. So if we want to start this meeting at either 8 or 8.30 to not be on a 15 minute boundary, um, I think like small plus, we tend to only use half an hour. Um, so small plus one for moving this to 8.30 and going from 8.30 to 9. Curious. Uh, um, so I'm just looking at my calendar, and I'm seeing Bifrost moving back to 7:30 next week because I assume it's time change stuff. I don't know. Yeah, maybe you're right. Too early to celebrate. Uh, that we could just have the pause. Uh, I'd say wait till next week and figure out what the times are actually going to be for this meetings. Uh, yeah. I'll pick Victor. Ollie? Or Ollie, I guess, at this point. Anyone else have questions or parking lots or other things? Steven, I guess I'm just noticing looking at the Badger garbage collection thing that you have to run garbage collection more than once because each time you run it, it deletes at most one log file. Yeah, we do. Okay. Yeah, so like if you look at uh, when you run the system by GC, um, it runs it in a loop until it doesn't do anything else. Uh, I think this could still technically not finish code selecting, but it does it the best it can at least. Uh, then we have another background loop that just like sort of periodically calls garbage collection. Like it actually has two two timers where it's like the long timer 
um, where it waits for a while and then it calls garbage collection once and then if it succeeds, it waits a short timer and then calls it again and then keeps on doing it until it stops succeeding and then it waits a long timer. Um, so like, that's how we like uh, sort of in the background clean up like um, uh, uh, content writing records and stuff like that. But yeah. But yeah, it's not doing anything actually. So we'll have to figure that one out. So, okay. I'm going to call time. I don't see any other questions. See y'all. Good luck. <laughs>